Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of John the Comic Guy. Today's episode is going to be in two parts. The first is, I think, an extremely important topic. I'm a foodie. I love food. And don't you too? Wouldn't you rather eat something great while you're reading your books or you're watching TV rather than crummy chips? So stick with me on this. This is one of my home run recipes. It's Asian scallion pancakes. Um, if you haven't gotten them at a Chinese restaurant, you probably should have, but you're not going to eat them anymore because I'm going to show you how to make them. It's not too hard. They freeze great and they taste great when you stick them in the toaster oven. So stay with me on that. And then on the flip side of that topic, then I'm going to show you some footage that I took at South Jersey Comic Con. Uh, that's the one that Frankenstein Comics, Billy B, put on out in Swedesboro, New Jersey. There are a handful of phenomenal phenomenal people, vendors that run great shows. Wayne and, and, and Clifton, it's John Paul, right? JP has for decades run a great show. Uh, if you go to the one by Philadelphia, it's Derek, right? There's no doubt when you go to Derek's show, it's a great show. Frankenstein Comics, Billy Bede, has consistently for decades run a great show. He, he has great banter when he's talking to his clients. I, I think he's just a, a, a charming fellow. So stay, stay tuned for the footage. I'm going to show you my little walk around, and I'm going to show you a couple of books that I got uh, at that show as well. And you know how picky I am, right? I don't really get a lot when I'm, I'm, I'm shopping at fair market value, uh, but sometimes I just get a deal, and, 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 uh, and this one happened to be with Billy Bead as well. So stay tuned, and... Uh, will show you the recipe and my uh, demonstration for scallion pancakes coming up next. So I have all the ingredients here to make a homemade scallion pancake. Um, this dough is purely water and flour. And I need it a little bit. I do not over knead it because you don't want the gluten to come out and it's going to make it a, a tough dough. Um, but I need it just enough and then I cover it. I let it rest for about 20 minutes to a half hour. I cut up scallions, nice and thin. Then of course there's the oil. You can use any kind of oil, olive oil, canola oil, whatever. And then uh, salt. And it's gonna be a decent amount of salt. So I took a ball, maybe the size of a three inch ball. And as you can see, I'm rolling it nice and thin. It's gonna be sticky, so I, I, I layer the, uh, the surface with flour. So. I'm rolling it very thin. I would say, if you look at it, it's about an eighth of an inch thick. Uh, eighth of an inch thick. And I'm just rolling it very thin. Then, I'm putting a nice layer of oil on there, right? It's almost like if you're making a pizza and you're putting spaghetti sauce on there or tomato sauce. So it's gonna cover it because this is the process that's gonna generate all of the layers. I'll put a little more oil. So if you're saying, wow, that's a decent amount of oil. Yeah, you're right, it is. This is probably not the most healthy thing, but it's certainly gonna taste good. And I get a very liberal amount of salt. So I got a pinch here. I'm gonna actually add another pinch. So I would say if you're gonna make these, if you're gonna try making these, give it a taste after you make one because you may have to add more salt. You probably will. It's, otherwise, it's really just bland bread. Then I add a liberal, a liberal, I could speak English, um, amount of scallions. Spread it around. Now I'm going to roll it up. By the way, I want to thank my, my, my love, Crystal Lynn, for taping me here doing this. I do not want to be touching a phone with this. So I remember before I said it's, you're going to start with like a three inch ball. I just rolled it both ways and now it again forms, forms about a three inch ball. And then I keep on adding a little bit of flour. The oil is going to squeak out. This is not a necessarily a clean process. So oil is going to squirt out. Scallions are going to squirt out. It doesn't matter. It's going to hold. <laughs> it's going to hold the majority of it. 
and I'm gonna fold it, I'm gonna roll it pretty flat. It's gonna actually be maybe now a quarter of an inch. But before when it was just dough, it was an eighth of an inch. And then I'm gonna roll it to about a quarter of an inch. Maybe even a little thinner, right? I, I kind of I kind of like my scallion pig cakes thinner. So you see what the, that looks like? And then I'm gonna throw it in the frying pan. So when you come back, we're gonna have one already in process frying and I'll probably have a second one. Okay, so just before I, before you go, just to kind of see the thickness. Again, it's about an, an eighth of an inch, um, a quarter of an inch. All right. So as you can see how golden brown they are. Look fantastic, right? And again, as with Chinese cooking, you're using a decent amount of oil, so just you're just frying these up till they're golden brown on both sides. And uh, after one of them is done, we're gonna resume videotape or, or uh, taping, and then I'll show you how we cut it up. Okay. I'm gonna cut it up like uh, an eighth. Let's see what I'm talking about. And really, depending on what you and your family wanna do, you cut it up in eighths, cut it up in quarters, I guess cutting it up in eights is what the restaurant will do. It's flaming hot, but I'm gonna still do it. I'm gonna do it. Matter of fact, I have a little dipping sauce. One of these days I'll talk about what I put in my dipping sauce too. Chinese restaurants don't really always give you this information, but let's see. Krista, are you jealous? Mm. Thank you. One thing I didn't mention before is when you're making, after you make the little, like the three, three inch bowls of dough in between cooking, because you're gonna be, you're gonna have plenty just sitting there, cover it up with a wet paper towel. So I just, I, I wet a paper towel, cover it up. This keeps it moist. Um, as you can see, oh, I think we've been cooking for maybe about 45 minutes to an hour and you'll have a stack of these. They freeze exceptionally well. So, you know, if we have some to eat, the rest will freeze. Um, to reheat them, you can stick them either in the microwave for about 50 seconds. Um, I actually like them in the air fryer, air frying for about you know two minutes, and they really crisp up nicely again. If you microwave them, obviously they're going to get a little uh, softer, not as crispy, but they're they're really just as good. So, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, you're you're going to have a lifetime supply of great scallion pancakes from now on. So enjoy, and thank you so much for your time. I just want to take a moment here to thank our sponsor, Comic Skin, for giving us 5% off any of their self-slab devices, which is the singles, the 5-packs, or the 10-packs. To claim the 5% off, just make sure at checkout, where you can type in a coupon code, you put John the Comic Guy 5, and you get your 5% off. Uh, these devices, for me, work fantastic. I, I, they're my favorite out of all the self-slab devices because after you put your comic in and they're protected, they are more of a typical size of a slab. So for my OCD, they're not a little shorter, they're not a little thinner, they just fit perfect in, in with my other slabs. The other devices I've noticed, they're a little shorter, they're a little thinner, and you can't have a customized label, or if you can, it doesn't have a customized label that just meets my needs. So for me, I'm able to customize my favorite books in my own collection and be able to read them again and then put it back in the, in the self-slab device whenever I want. So again, for me, it's just perfect. So again, claim your 5%, get some self-slabs, and if you do, if you make your own labels, Share them with me. I really want to see how your uh, your books come out. Um, you've seen some of mine. I'm going to continue to share how mine look, but I want to see what yours looks like. So thank you so much to Comic Skin for the five percent off, John the Comic Guy Five. 
Hey everybody, this is John the Comic Guy, and today we are going to the South Jersey Comic Con uh, in Swedesboro, New Jersey. So let's go in and check out uh, the vendors. Now the first thing that struck me about this convention as I started uh, entering the room is there really was a fantastic crowd. As you're going to see, uh, I had to kind of squeeze in between people. I like this kind of a convention when it's uh, it's full of action. These vendors were very engaging. Uh, we're going to get to Billy Bead last, but um, great vendors, trade paperbacks. There was a couple of vendors that sold toys. Uh, I, I don't really, when I go to these events, focus on any of the toys. I kind of hone right in on comic books. But I was impressed. These guys had really good products. They were all very friendly. When you have a crowd like this, if you've ever done a show, um, for, the, for the folks that are, are vendors in the audience, they, these, there was a buzz going on because there's just always people buying. I actually saw a fellow uh, buying when he was talking to a vendor, the guy asked him, he goes, are you uh, paying with credit card? And the guy goes, cash. And um, they were counting out his books, and it was like thirteen or $1,400. And, uh, you know, for me, that would be a dream. I've, I've never had a single customer kind of dish out that kind of money, but um, what, a, what a dream for these vendors that must have been. Yeah, really, really friendly. A lot of great products. Uh, now, a lot of these guys had like $5 bins. If you buy from me, you know I, I just classify my comics. I, I have a couple of books that are marked uh, as, as marked prices, but I often have 3 for $10 boxes. I have $5 boxes. I have $10 in up boxes. I was really delighted to see a lot of these guys had that. Some of them really did have a prices marked um, a mentality, which is fine. Hey, uh, everybody sells differently. There you go. There's uh, uh, one of their toy uh, vendors. Just it really had great stuff. They had things marked out nicely. A couple of the vendors, besides Billy, I I, I knew a couple of them buy from me. I really, uh, uh, it was nice seeing people. Um, at this, yeah, there you go. So everything's like five dollars. Uh, so they they did have some really really fair pricing. Yeah, when you have dollar and two dollar bins, there's Billy. Uh, you know there's there's a nice huddle up on a crowd so uh, let me uh, kind of conclude this part of the video here yeah Billy has a great wall too uh, but let me conclude this part of the video and then I'm gonna share with everybody uh, the couple of books that I got from Billy Bead I spent about an hour and a half out at South Jersey Con uh, and again that's the show that Billy Bead from Frankenstein Comics runs and I really love that show. Um, the guy has always been great and, and, and always been great to me. So let me show you a couple of the things that I picked up at the show. Uh, at, at the door, they uh, I think for the first hundred people, they let you pick uh, some, some giveaways. One of the giveaways I saw, I had to pick up, right? Does anybody remember Friends of Old Marvel? Boom. Now, I in my day had a handful of books. I, I did pay for that giveaway uh, or, or, or that mail order subscription. I paid for that and I enjoyed it in the 70s. I don't have any of them. I had the one that Staranko did, the Hulk cover. Um, I forget the other ones, but that was the one most notable that I just remember. What I did with it, I don't know. I probably just tore it up or threw it out or burned it or something, right? But um, Foom, I thought was always a good periodical. And they had a giveaway, I think this was from 2017, so they must have that sure. So I'm looking forward to reading this one. <coughs> Foom number one, uh, this cost me nothing, and this was just one of the door giveaways, but hopefully it's going to be as good as the uh, what I remember Foom being in the uh, 70s, and I'm going to enjoy this. So the next two I got were both from Billy Bead from Frankenstein Comics, and I'm going to tell you what he ultimately said. So. The first, 
is Spectra number one. Um, I always like Spectra. I'll tell you what I really like, and and despite the fact that Spider Man and Iron Man are like my favorite heroes, what I always liked and thought was so visually dynamic are capes. So as you can imagine, Superman, Batman, Spawn, oh, those characters with capes, I really always thought were great. So Spectra, of course, is one of them. So I saw Spectra number one. I have number two and on. I just never had one. Billy had this in his $25 box. Um, so keep that in mind, okay? That was a $25 book. Spectra number one. I think it was a 5.0. So again, it's a, a mid to low grade copy, but um, I already pressed it and it looks it looks quite good. But, but even pressed, I think it's a, a 5.0. The other book I saw, and this is on his wall, it was almost hidden. So I go, hey Billy, get, can you show me what that amazing Spider-Man is? Um, and it, 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 this was a rough copy. Billy admitted it, it, it was priced at $100. So, you know, Billy's a funny guy. He's like, he goes, John, this, this is a rough copy. I look at it and I, I confirm that, it, yeah, it's a rough copy, right? The spot. There, there are spine ticks and there are spines that are nothing but ticks. That would, this would happen to be one of those. But So, again, I have to grade it. it, it it's a 2.0. But, when I, I'm looking at this, I'm looking at that uh, Spectra, and I go, hey, Billy, could you? <laughs> so between a $100 cover, uh, uh, the pricing on this, and 25 that's, you know, about 25 So I go, any way you could go to 90 And Billy's response was, John, I could do better than that. <laughs> I'll give you both for 75 okay? <sighs> yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> I took him. How do you look? I know seventy-five is closer to the fair market value of both of these books, especially in this condition. But I was man, Billy is such a great guy. You know, I, I, he deserves to make money. He's running a great show. I like his inventory. I like his personality. He's a fun dude. You know, I, I would have paid ninety, but he's like, I'm going to do you better. Seventy-five. So my hats off to you. Two thumbs up. You get John the Comic Guy's big time stamp of approval. As always, right, when it comes to Billy, when it comes to JP. And again, if you are in North Jersey or New York and you could ever get a chance to go to one of JP's, John Paul's, conventions, he does one in Clifton, New Jersey, he does one in Wayne, New Jersey, go. His shows are wonderful. He's, If I remember correctly, he has door prizes, JP's great. And if you're near the Philadelphia area, go to Derek's show. Derek is another solid vendor solid promoter so really it uh, I probably am forg uh, forgetting a couple and if I am forgive me but really JP Billy Derek those are the three that at least stand out in my mind and if I see if I remember more I'm gonna make sure I name drop them to them too because they're great so anyway if you like this content everybody I would encourage you to please hit the subscribe button I want to thank you so much for letting me share this content with you I hope you enjoy and if you make them let me know what your thoughts are on my scallion pancakes. Guys, this is a good recipe. Try it. Uh, just make sure you roll it out thin. Keep me posted on if you like to cook, you know, like my cooking, um, if you like my content, and I will definitely talk to you all soon. Thank you much.